All right. Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you here for another Meshwork CPD. We've got Russ and Tim with us today, um, and they're going to be talking about LinkedIn social selling. Um, they're going to be bringing up um, how they've helped Mesh Energy, and it's been so useful watching our um, own personal LinkedIn grow, um, talking about how to build up blogs, ghostwriting, and all sorts. So get your notepad and pen ready, because you're going to need it. <laughs> um, just want to go over some housekeeping rules. Um, if you could keep your microphones on mute throughout um, the presentation, uh, but please do add your questions into the chat box. Um, we can go through them all at the end. If there's one you want to ask in person, just, um, just let us know, type it in the chat box and we can unmute you at the end and you can ask it in person. Um, the webinar is being recorded and will appear on our YouTube channel and on Meshwork. So most of you will already know what Meshwork is about, but for those of you who are new, Meshwork is aiming to be the go-to place for sustainable design education. And we're building this in with a exciting, engaging community. Um, we're running CPDs for the educational side and we're gonna build in networking events in the new year to get that engagement side going a bit more. But the aim is for all of our members to come together and push the sustainable design conversation forward. Um, so we launched, we launched Meshwork in about April this year and we've, we've got about 800 members now and that's completely thanks to you guys. So we wanted to thank you by creating some little icons that you can use and you can share. So we've got ones that say join us that you can use to share to your colleagues and ones you can put in your email footers. Um, but yeah, please do share Meshwork to anyone you think it would be really useful for. Um, and finally, for those of you who aren't familiar with what Mesh Energy do, we're an independent and holistic energy consultancy. Um, we're based in Surrey. Uh, but we work with um, projects all across the UK and the globe. Uh, primarily, we work with design teams and architects to make the sustainable design process as cost effective and as simple as possible. But um, that's everything from me. I will now pass on to Russ and Tim to go over the selling um, LinkedIn presentation. Great. Thanks, Kat. Um, so let's just get the um, PowerPoint side of things up and running, hopefully. Okay, share screen. Okay, Tim? Looks good. Looks good. Okay, yeah. we're in business. Yeah. So um, yeah, hi everyone. It's uh, it's great to be here today on Meshwork uh, to give a light version of our social selling and LinkedIn training. Um, this is something that uh, Tim and I do a lot of uh, here at Avery and Brown. Um, so let's just dive right in. We've got some uh, some intro slides. Sorry. Um, so first of all, there's a brief contents for you. Um, I won't linger on that for too long. We'll just dive straight into it. Um, so first of all, who are we? Uh, so we're a, a marketing and creative agency which puts people and planet on par with profit. We're based here in Farnham in Surrey um, in the same office as Mesh Energy, which is obviously very handy when they're one of our uh, one of our big retainer clients. Um, and yeah, we're we're a regenerative business. Um, we're, well, we're on a journey um, whereby um, our, our end goal is to be regenerative, e.g. going beyond sustainable, which is um, just no longer enough in this day and age. So we want to be a business which is actively better, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the planet and society is better because Avery and Brown exists. Um, and we're, we're 16 months into our business journey, but we already do um, do a heck of a lot. This is just a very, very high level slide, but you can learn much more about it on our website. Uh, we've got some great clients. Um, all of whom are sustainability focused in some way. So that is um, everything for us. Um, our pr prospective clients have to pass um, certain criteria before we'll even agree to work with them. So we, we take this very seriously. And uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're having a good, good first 16 months and uh, yeah, excited to be here. 
So first of all, we thought we'd bring uh, the training to life with a few um, statistics, because I think it's always important to show that you that you walk the walk and that you guys know who's uh, who's presenting to you. So um, we thought we'd uh, we thought we'd ask everyone what these numbers have in common. You don't actually need to answer, but uh, say 10, 14, 208, 307, 714 and just under 30,000. So that's actually 10 posts, 14 shares, 208 comments, 307 profile views, 714 likes or engagements as they're now called. And 29,526 was the number of content views. And those are my personal LinkedIn stats just from November 2021 alone. So we wanted to put that in perspective and ask what figures like that might mean for you and your business. Um, and actually, if we go a little bit wider and look at all of 2021 up to the end of November, this is, um, I've published 162 posts on LinkedIn. I've had 89 shares of, of those posts, uh, just over 3,000 comments, just under 4,000 profile views, uh, 7,500 likes, and uh, just under 400,000 content views. So, um, okay, great, but actually what do those figures really translate into? So for us, sorry, for us, it's, uh, it's uh, inbound inquiries, um, which is just counts for so much because I don't think I've ever met anyone, let's be honest, who enjoys the, the outbound sales process where it's kind of cold. So, you know, cold calling, sending a cold email or even a LinkedIn message and stuff, we, we don't have to do that. Um, and we've never had to do that to date simply because we win 86% of all our business through, through LinkedIn and the remaining 14% comes from existing client referrals. Uh, and I know those figures because we had to work it out very recently for, uh, for our business coach in a session we were doing with him. So we just wanted to put that into perspective and show that, uh, yeah, we really walk the walk on this stuff. Um, so let's crack on. So killing it with organic content. So our LinkedIn activity as Russ and Tim, and we'll talk about how that relates to Avery and Brown, helps to build our personal brands and therefore the Avery and Brown brand by association. It helps us to actually upskill ourselves. So we get better at writing, making videos, creating content. It helps us. It helps establish us as leaders in our chosen niche. Um, there's a great book all about that called Key Person of Influence by Daniel Priestley, which I can definitely recommend uh, checking out if you're interested. Um, it creates opportunities. So as in opportunities beyond just the, the actual sales side of things. So um, from our LinkedIn activity, we've, had, we've been given speaking gigs. Uh, we've been uh, guests on podcasts, spoken on webinars, spoken at events and stuff like that. Um, and it generates highly qualified leads. So not just leads, but highly qualified leads. And as I said earlier, 86% of all new business uh, for us comes directly through LinkedIn. Uh, and this can be applicable to any industry. It's not, it's not at all just because we're a creative marketing agency. Um, and of course, we do this for our clients as well. And we've got some examples about Mesh Energy later on. And so above all, it grows our business. And I would say we punch well above our weight for a 16 month old business. So we're really passionate about how social selling on LinkedIn can be so effective and about sharing that wealth and knowledge uh, with our clients and other people, which is why we're here today. Oh, and uh, the way I was able to gather those stats uh, without having to individually count every single post is there's a great app you might want to check out called Shield app and it's a shield app.ai and uh, it gives you a breakdown of all your LinkedIn uh, content and that's just a screenshot of it there. So shield app.ai. So setting the scene, what even is social selling? Well, it's simply developing relationships, e.g. being social as a direct part of the sales process. So it's sharing content which doesn't even need to be uh, relevant to the services you provide as whatever you do as an architecture practice, as a renewable energy consultancy. And we'll look at that much more later on. Um, it's engaging and interacting with others in a meaningful and authentic way. It's social listening. So what others are saying in their social media updates. So something that a lot of people take, uh, take um, 
a bit of uh, confidence from is that you don't actually need to start necessarily publishing your own content and putting yourself out there to um, to see success from LinkedIn. You can actually just engage a lot and well with other people's content. Um, and it's about having a strong personal brand. What's the personal brand? Very simply, it's just your reputation. It it's a bit of a buzz while now and what we really mean by it is your reputation it's how you promote yourself both online and off it's your unique combination of skills experience and personality and it's what others say about you so it's your reputation social promotions that kind of thing and ultimately it's what differentiates you and therefore your business so to put that into perspective a bit Personal brand helps build authority. It helps establish you as an expert in your field and it satisfies uh, your target audience's expectations because they expect you to be those things. Uh, the word thought leader gets bandied around a lot, um, perhaps too much, but ultimately building a personal brand does help you achieve that. Differentiate yourself, as we said. And of course, it helps you to grow your business. So if anyone's here thinking about how they want to grow their business in 2022 and beyond in ways that they haven't explored yet. We personally can't recommend this highly enough. Um, and it's based on our personal experience over, over years. You know, Avery and Brown's only 16 months old, but we've been doing this stuff for as part of a decade now. To put it in perspective a little bit more, this is, this is the difference in personal branding. So let's take two almost identical professionals in terms of their qualifications, their expertise, sector knowledge everything that they work in so let's call them let's say they're john and jane let's say they've both got 15 years of experience they're both sector specialists they have both educated to postgrad degree level um, they're both senior manager director level in the job that they're in but it's jane who invests time in building her personal brand maybe she's got her own website uh, maybe she blogs regularly uh, she's highly active on linkedin that's the, that's the only difference between the two of them. So Jane isn't necessarily better than John in any way in terms of technical knowledge, skills or expertise, but because of the emphasis that she places on building her personal brand, she's the one who gets offered PR opportunities. She's the one who is much more visible to her prospects. And remember, they're, they're direct competitors. They work in exactly the same field. Jane is much more visible to her prospects. She wins more work as a result for her company. And she sees that growth in her business. And that is exactly what it's like. Um, Tim and I have competitors out there. Other sustainable marketing agencies are popping up all the time at the moment. Um, so it's just as relevant to us as it is to anyone else. So that's set the scene a bit. But why LinkedIn? There are, of course, lots of social media channels out there. And there are lots of different ways that you can build your personal brand. LinkedIn is absolutely not the be all and end all. And it's only just one of them. But in our personal experience, it is still the primary uh, B2B networking platform uh, for business professionals. So, of course, Instagram, for example, will be a much more suitable channel for someone else based in a different sector, different industries. But LinkedIn for us and for a lot of people on this uh, webinar today will be the one where you'll see really good opportunities. So LinkedIn used to be just a place to create and display your online CV, connect with recruiters, browse job opportunities, and ultimately connect with other professionals, but specifically to your industry. So it was very recruitment and job focused uh, and published content, but directly related to jobs and recruitment. That's what it was all about. It was an online recruitment, job searching recruitment platform. LinkedIn today is a completely different beast. So it's, uh, it's a place to create more than just your CV. You can add links to your portfolio and your work. Um, you can connect with anyone interesting from any industry. You're not just kind of fed uh, recommendations by LinkedIn of other people in your industry, so other architects, whatever it might be. Um, you can browse jobs still, of course, but employer branding and company culture is a much more important thing than it used to be. And of course, you can build your brand, personal brand and establish authority in your field, as we've just talked about. And you can publish any kind of interesting content and different types of content. It doesn't just need to be recruitment focused. And we'll bring that to life uh, a lot more in a few minutes. Uh, this is just a quote by Hootsuite, which kind of re-emphasizes that. So Hootsuite's a social media scheduling app. And they said, LinkedIn has transitioned from being just a recruitment platform 
to being a professional network where people educate and inform themselves and learn about other companies in their industry. But I take it wider than that and say you actually learn a lot more than what's going on just in your industry. That's where the magic happens is by growing a big network of people from all different industries and uh, yeah, widening your horizons in that way. What's the opportunity? So there are 722 million business professionals on LinkedIn and it will be more than that now because these stats were accurate as of kind of the beginning of 2021. But only 250 million of those are active users, so monthly active users, and there are only 55 million active company pages. Again, company pages which publish content on a monthly basis. And only 1% of those are publishing content regularly. So that's only two and a half million. So it can be it can be tempting to think that on such a big platform, which has been around for nearly 20 years, that you've missed the boat because obviously it's been around for ages and there are loads of people on it, but that is simply not true. Um, so there is an enormous opportunity to just get started. You are, you are not too late. You have not missed the boat. Don't worry. Um, and a few more stats. 30% of a company's engagement LinkedIn comes from its employees. So when we do the full version of our LinkedIn training, we do it to the whole business or we do it to as many people from the business as, uh, as they can manage because the magic really happens as a company when all of your employees are highly active on LinkedIn. Uh, employees are 14 times more likely to share content from their employers than other type of content on LinkedIn. And 33% of business to business decision makers use LinkedIn to research purchases. And uh, to be honest, these are stats from LinkedIn themselves, but I'm surprised that percentage isn't higher because certainly everyone we meet is on LinkedIn and they use it to, um, yeah, to look for suppliers, etc. And companies that post weekly see a two times higher engagement rate on average than those which don't. So our training uh, centers around what we call our ABCs of LinkedIn. And this is obviously a light version of it because we, we do this in uh, half a day normally. Uh, and it's uh, like full, very in-depth training. So uh, we, can't, we don't have time to get through everything today, but you can obviously ask Tim and I about our full version if you're interested. Uh, so the A's are appear and attract, B is build and balance, and C is consistency and community. Um, now you do need patience, persistence, and progress. Uh, as with most things, there's no silver bullet to seeing success. However, some of the tips that we'll tell you today about what type of content to publish and things like that, you can actually see some, some really quick wins, especially if your LinkedIn activity to date has been kind of like really basic and you haven't really explored publishing your own content before and you've just been a kind of like observer. Um, and a quick side note before we delve any deeper, and this will be a recurring theme throughout, is please remember that people want to get to know you. So we'll talk about the benefits of publishing as you, so as Russ versus as your company page, as Avery and Brown, uh, much later. And we can obviously field any questions that uh, anyone's got uh, towards the end of the presentation if we haven't managed to cover something. So let's start with our A's. So appear and attract. So what do we mean by this? Well, first of all, Everything centers around your LinkedIn profile. If you haven't built that and you haven't optimized it, you're immediately missing opportunities. So the A in appear and attract is obviously how you appear and it's about optimizing your, your LinkedIn profile. And luckily LinkedIn makes this really easy for you. The top three priorities bar none are your profile photo, your headline and your banner image. So these are three things that appear um, like all the time on LinkedIn. Well, the first two are your, your profile photo and your headline, which we're about to dive into. So profile photo best practices. Again, we haven't got the, the usual 10 slides that we've got on this section, but basically a nice, clear head and, holder, head and shoulders headshot of you um, is, is all you need, where ideally you're smiling as well. So what we're not looking for is full, full length body shots because in that tiny circle, if it's a full length body shot of you, we can't actually see your face and what you look like. Um, it shouldn't be blurry, it should be high quality. Generally avoid like hats, sunglasses, scarves, anything that kind of disguises your face. Obviously if it's very on brand for you to be wearing a pair of sunglasses because you own a sunglasses shop, then that's obviously absolutely fine. But those are just some general tips. Um, okay, headline, 
as something we're really passionate about because so so many people underutilize this like 99 percent of everyone is on linkedin so your headline is the bit that appears under your name so a terrible example of a headline would be if it just said marketing director because it tells me absolutely nothing about you really in real terms okay great i know that you're a marketing director but i don't know where you work i don't know what you do i don't know who you serve i don't know i generally don't know anything about you so you have a lot of characters to play with in your headlines. This is the bit that appears directly under your name. By default, LinkedIn will ask you, do you want to put your current job title as your headline? Um, so that's what a lot of people have got. You've got a lot of characters to play with there. So an example of an average headline would be marketing director for company X. Okay, now at least I know where you work. But a really good headline will be your like your 10 second sales pitch because you've got an opportunity there to tell people what you do, who you serve. So I believe ours is you know a trusted part, a trusted marketing and creative partner to sustainability focused SMEs. Great. Now I know exactly what you do, who you are, and which audience you service. And I think we've got some uh, slides later on where we explore that a bit. Everything else after your after that top level. Uh, top level above the fold bit on your profile is um, your summary section, also called your about section, which is your opportunity to give like a longer sales pitch. You can have a section called featured media. This is where you post or pin uh, specific media that you want to show off to your audience. It could be a PDF, it could be a YouTube video. So it's a really good opportunity to, um, to give your target audience uh, something extra. Uh, you've obviously then got your uh, employment experience, uh, your education, and you can have recommendations on LinkedIn as well, which if you have the opportunity to get some, do absolutely get some, because obviously people love reading a bit of social proof about you. And when you've done everything, LinkedIn helps you with this. It'll tell you how complete your, your profile is. It all leads up to what they call having an all-star profile. So they literally aid that process. Here's what company consistency across employees looks like when it's done badly. So we've actually used uh, Facebook as an example because they're a terrible company, so why not? So Facebook, so this guy is um, a senior director of marketing partnerships, EMA at Facebook. And, you know, he's got, he's got an OK uh, profile photo and then he's got a nice banner image. But then over here, we've got Nick, who's, um, you know, a business engineering and partnerships lead at Facebook. And that's what his um, profile shot um, and banner image looked like. Again, he's he's too small in his profile photo because he's chosen a photo of him speaking at an event, clearly. But I can't actually see what he really looks like. And then you've got Rose, who's VP communications at Facebook, and she's got her profile settings set so that if you're not a first degree connection of her, you can't actually see her profile photo or banner image at all, which we would strongly recommend changing. So unless for some really good reason you want to have your privacy setting set very, very strictly, but then I would ask yourself why you're even on LinkedIn in the first place, then I would recommend changing that so that anyone can see your profile photo. Because ultimately, if you're a second degree connection, but I'm thinking about connecting with you, I, I want to see what you look like because I'm actually checking that you're the person that I think you are based on the event that I just met you at, for example. So just something to think about. Company consistency done well. We've obviously used ourselves as an example. So that's me, that's Beth, and that's Tim. And uh, as you can see, when people visit any one of us on LinkedIn, doesn't matter who they visit first or in what order, we are presenting a really uh, comprehensive and uh, you know joined up approach in terms of how we look right down right right the way down from our profile photos, which are kind of customized because Tim's put that our company colors in like a pink and blue ring around it we've got the same uh we've got the same headline image which again we're telling our target audience exactly who we are and what we do and we've got our url there as well as another kind of little sales thing to to direct people to our website like everything about it is a marketing opportunity just remember that and then our headlines you can play with your headline and edit it as many times as you want. So at the moment, we're emphasizing that we're hiring. So we've put that at the start of our headline to draw attention to the fact that we're hiring at the moment. And then we've got our own job titles. So founder and strategic lead, junior graphic designer, founder and creative lead, et cetera. And then we've got the same positioning statement. So trusted marketing and creative partners for ambitious sustainability focused businesses. Um, so just something to think about there and hopefully bring it, bringing optimized profiles to life a bit for you.
And at the end of the day, optimizing your profile will help you to attract the right kind of people, but also importantly, lose the ones that don't matter. So you'll stop wasting their time and your time as well due to attracting attention from like a lead who maybe isn't from your target audience. Moving on to the Bs, so build and balance. So this is all about content. So notebooks at the ready, uh, lots of good tips coming up. And we've got a summary slide of tips at the end, I think. But publishing authentic, valuable and engaging content to LinkedIn helps to build trust and credibility, increase brand awareness for your personal brand and then your um, your business by, by association, obviously, because they've seen your, your headline. Um, providing a source of proof on your authority, attract the right kind of people, shows personality, obviously, as long as you stay authentic. And we've got some more uh, tips about that later on. And it starts conversations and builds relationships. Again, social, being social as a direct part of the sales process so that you never have to actually sell and pick up the phone and do outbound sales calls or send cold emails. And ultimately, more engagement, and share a bit, uh, at least a more shareability and the cycle continues and we'll paint, uh, paint a better picture of that in a few slides time. Content types and best practices. You only used to be able to do this. So text-based posts like, uh, you know, LinkedIn from the very early days, um, that's all it was. You can now, of course, post an image, uh, an article. So a LinkedIn article is a much longer form piece of content. So it's like a blog post as opposed to a, social media update. However, LinkedIn has actually recently increased the character limit of just a text-based post. So a normal post that you see in your feed now can actually be quite long um, and it reduces the need to have to use the article, which um, gets like less reach for, for some reason. Uh, you can publish videos uh, natively to LinkedIn. So not just publishing a link to a YouTube channel, but publishing a video file natively to LinkedIn will get it more views. Uh, industry news. You can live stream if you've got access to that, which I think they've rolled out across the board now. You can publish PDFs, which is a really neat thing to do. And you can do it very cleverly. Uh, so you can publish a square PDF and it will act like a sliding kind of carousel post on Instagram. So it's a great way to share some engaging content. And you can publish polls, which we will all see in our, in our feeds. Content topics and ideas. So content does absolutely not have to be sales focused. In fact, it shouldn't be sales focused. Feel free to scroll through mine or Tim's last 30, 50 LinkedIn posts. And I guarantee you will not find a single post which talks about us and the services we provide and why you should buy from Avery and Brown and why you should choose us. And this is, you know, stuff. It should, content should just be one or more of these things, engaging, educational, informative, add value, be entertaining, be inspiring, be shareworthy. It's obviously quite important. Be thumb stopping. What do we mean by that? Well, bear in mind, most people don't use um, the internet on laptops and PCs anymore. They use it on their phones. So we're all sitting there scrolling through our phones uh, on the commute or at home on, on the sofa with our thumbs. So what's a piece of thumb stopping content that will stop someone in their tracks, maybe due to a really catchy first line or uh, a really eye catching image? And really importantly, it should be yours. We are looking for authentic content. There are pieces of content out there that have been done to death and that's not interesting to anyone. So once I'm following you and I found you, thanks to your newly optimized profile, I want to hear about what you've learned recently, what your challenges have been and how you overcame them, your wins and successes, your failures. So actually, some of those posts are the posts that do really well because people love that authenticity of times where actually they may be fucked up and it's not all about the successes and the wins that they've achieved that week. Uh, tips and tricks, e.g. Um, any productivity hacks that you can share with people, like share the wealth. Uh, your story, so your, your individual story or your company story, so your purpose, vision, mission, values, et cetera. Your why, so again, that's your, your purpose as a business, why you exist beyond making profit. Uh, maybe it's your favorite books, podcasts, TV shows. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg on, on, on topic ideas and things that you could and should be sharing. Maybe it's your recent team hires. And uh, Tim, do you want to do you want to take over on these um, these example slides? And I'll do the I'll do the. 
Absolutely. So um, we've got a few examples here of some of the some of the posts which have worked really well for us. And as Russ said, we don't sell on LinkedIn, uh, not directly. No sales messages uh, go out there. So this is a this is a, an announcement when we hired our first employee, Beth. She's in the middle there between Russ and I. And you can see this was shared uh, via Russ's profile. It's had 226 uh, engagements, 50 comments congratulating us, which is great, and uh, just over 8,000 views um, in the feed. And it, it, if we look at the anatomy of actually the post itself, we've got a great photo. We've tagged the three of us in it. Uh, we've used emojis in the um, in the post. We've tagged my set. Russ has tagged me and Beth in there. And we've used three hashtags at the bottom, which is the optimal amount. I'm sure we'll get onto hashtags uh, in, in a couple of slides time. Um, so that's just one example of some team news. Here is another example. You will probably recognize this chap. Doug is the founder and MD of Mesh Energy. Um, last week, they announced that they are now a certified B Corp. So we um, uh, shot a video with, um, with Doug and popped that up on LinkedIn. And this is just a great way to be able to share some fantastic news and a big win uh, for them as a client, uh, just shy of 2,000 views of the video. That's also been shared out on the Mesh Energy Company page today, uh, later this afternoon. So we are able to then repurpose content for both of the uh, channels that Mesh and Doug own, which is fantastic. Uh, here's another one from Mesh Energy's company page. They've got just at the time of, of this snapshot, just shy of 1,400 uh, followers. I think they're on closer to 1,700 now. But this shows a, a community bike ride that Doug did to raise uh, awareness and uh, money for a charity. And he did that with the Holland uh, Green Architecture uh, uh, team, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, and uh, I think he said that uh, cycling 60K or something was pretty pretty hard going. He hadn't done it for a while. So um, well, I'll let you all ask him a little bit more about that. And I think finally, here's one from Doug. So you now have the ability to do polls on LinkedIn. You may have seen them in your feeds over the last couple of months. Um, uh, overused, some might say. I think underused, some might say. Uh, this is a fantastic example of asking Doug's audience, of which I think he has about four and a half thousand connections, uh, what they want to see uh, inside of a community, i.e. inside of uh, Meshwork. And you can see it got just over 7,000 views in his feed. The anatomy of the post, three hashtags. It's a question. We've got some in incredible engagement on this, on this post. Um, and as part of our wider support working with Mesh is we support the team on writing content for their LinkedIn profiles um, to help them uh, uh, create really, really killer, killer content. Um, so I think that's the last... On uh, one, one more example. One more. Ah, and this was when Mesh Work hit 500 members. And I think Kat said at the beginning, we're now closer to 800, which is fantastic. Um, and this is just a milestone announcement. Very, very simple. Very, no, no heavy graphic design has gone into that post. So if you don't have that as a resource, you can use free um, uh, tools such as Canva. Um, you can buy Photoshop, you know, it's it, creating content like that is very, very easy. Um, and it's, again, just a really, really nice example of a post out there just to quickly announce a milestone of, uh, of, of the 500 members. Brilliant. Thanks, Tim. And yeah, as Tim said on that first example, um, and then now that you've seen the rest, you might have identified a way that all the posts are actually formatted in terms of like nice line breaks between paragraphs and stuff to make it easy to read. Think about making it easy for your audience to read when they're looking at it on a mobile. Uh, you're not write, writing a, an academic paper, so avoid really long, big paragraphs of text. Make it easy to read. Use emojis sparingly. They catch the eye. Remember that you only see the first two lines, so you need to write uh, a nice opening that will entice people to read the three buttons that say see more, dot, 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 which then reveals the whole post. You've seen every single post we've shown you an example of has three hashtags. That's not some arbitrary number. That's what LinkedIn themselves say is the optimal amount. This isn't Instagram. You don't need to publish 30 hashtags on a LinkedIn post. Uh, it drives me nuts when I see people do that. It also drives me nuts when I see people use, like they hashtag random words, like 
hashtag the and stuff like that. I, I don't know why they're doing it. Well, I do. It's because they don't know how to use LinkedIn properly. But you can click on a hashtag and search how many followers it's got. So you want to be using hashtags that are relevant to your the post that you've just published and what it's about, but which also have a good number of followers, like hashtag sustainability. I can tell you has over 13 and a half million followers on LinkedIn. So you are giving your posts a much better chance of organic reach by including a relevant hashtag, which has got a good number of followers. So finally, on to our C's, which are consistency and community. Why is consistency so important? Well, as with a lot of things in life, you've just got to put the put the put the time in and stick with it. There is no magic bullet to success, but if there was, then it would be consistency. So success on LinkedIn does take time, effort, and perseverance. However, uh, if you put that in, you absolutely will see the results. And remember that we are speaking from experience here. And as I said at the beginning, it doesn't always take a long time. There are some things you can do to start just putting yourself out there and publishing content where actually you'll see an initial surge in engagement and stuff because LinkedIn will reward you as a kind of new active user uh, with some like high engagement early on if you've never published uh, a first type of a specific, specific type of content like if it's your first poll you've ever done, you might see that do really well because LinkedIn wants to show that to more people to encourage you to use it again. Same with the video, same with the PDF post. Um, please always remember that it's your target audience, which is your number one priority. So it's like kind of another way of saying like leave your ego at the door and just like ask yourself why you're publishing something. And ultimately, if it's, you know, going to be a valuable, entertaining or educational piece of content to your target audience. Don't forget about your connection strategy. You'll only ever see so much success on LinkedIn if you're still if you still only got 300 followers or 300 connections. You need to actively go out and build that. Don't just wait for people to send you a connection request all the time. You should be actively connecting with other people from your sector and other people that are just interesting who you might have something in common with. So you do use that search function to connect with the right kind of people. Again, you can search for hashtags, so search relevant hashtags, hashtag architecture, hashtag sustainability, hashtag commercial real estate, whatever it might be, uh, follow those hashtags so that you then see posts which are posts which include those hashtags in your feed, whereby you don't need to be connected with the person who published it to then see it, uh, engage with that post and then connect with the author who published it. Uh, connect with second and third degree connections when they engage with your content and always personalize it. So you have the opportunity to send a short note with a connection request. And unless it's really obvious why you're connecting, i.e. because you just met someone at an event and you're following up the connection request, they know who you are and they know to expect it, then just write a short personal note. Um, and it can be anything from, I just wanted to say, I really liked that uh, piece of that post you just published on X. Uh, I can see we're both in a similar field and share some mutual connections. Uh, thought I'd thought I'd send a connection request. Just something short, doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> and ultimately, what you're doing is growing your network, which gives you more of an opportunity to grow your business. And there is a really old saying that your your network is your net worth. Um, and I would personally agree with that. So whether it's a cliche or not, it's probably a cliche because it's true. So I would say having a big network uh, that I have actively tried to build has definitely helped us grow Avery and Brown. It definitely helped me grow my last business before I merged, merged it with Tim's to, to start Avery and Brown. And yeah, can't recommend it highly enough. So what is the number one key to growth on LinkedIn? Well, if you're really nervous or a bit apprehensive about starting to publish your own content, which a lot of people are, and we haven't had time to uh, to cover the common objections and stuff of why people have that fear uh, in this presentation today, because that's part of our full training. Uh, you'll be pleased to know that it's not publishing your own content, it's genuine engagement. So if you're not, if you're a bit unsure about putting yourself out there and starting to publish your own content, don't worry, because you can see really good success from LinkedIn by engaging with other people's content. And I don't just mean clicking the like button on something you find. I obviously mean commenting because doing, clicking a like just gives them a little boost, but it tells them nothing. So genuine engagement starts new relationships. 
it nurtures and strengthens existing relationships, whether that's an existing client, an existing prospect, supplier, partner. It builds credibility and trust. It builds rapport. And it's ultimately the foundation for successful social selling and being social. People just always forget the social part of social media. Um, for every piece of content that you publish, it's so important that you engage with the engagement you receive. If you publish a really good post on LinkedIn uh, and it starts getting really good engagement, 10, 15, 20 comments, and you're not there as the author of that post to respond to those comments and keep the conversation going, it's the equivalent of being at a dinner party, saying something really interesting or thought provoking. Everyone comes to you to want to talk to you about it and you just stand there with your arms folded, not saying anything, or you leave the room. That's exactly what you're doing in a digital context if you don't respond to comments that you get on your posts. So you've done a great post, all these people like, oh yeah, like I agree. Or even if they don't agree and they you know, put their point of view across, if you're not there to respond to them, you are missing an enormous trick and a huge opportunity. More engagement equals a longer content lifespan. LinkedIn works by three degrees of separation. As you, as you know from seeing your LinkedIn feed, you'll see posts in your feed that say, Tim likes this or Russ likes this. So we're one of your connections, but the post that you're seeing is from a second or third degree connection of yours. <clears throat> Every time you comment on your own post in response to a comment or do anything, you are giving that post a longer lifespan because LinkedIn will just keep showing it to more and more people organically because the it's telling the algorithm that that's an interesting piece of content worth showing and sharing. A few top tips and hacks. Uh, okay, so optimize your profile, crucial. Don't be afraid to just get started. Yes, there are 800 million LinkedIn users. Only 1% of those are using LinkedIn on a regular monthly basis to publish content. Think about that mobile first approach. So not just how you format your posts, but um, you know what will make uh, what will make thumb stopping content. Uh, reader friendly formatting. Uh, use emojis, but obviously sparingly. When used sparingly, they are a tactical tool. They're not just some cutesy little thing. They help to catch the eye and draw attention. Using emojis at the start of a bullet point list in a post is a really good way to use them. For example, tag people as appropriate using the at symbol and tag. The appropriate individual or a company page but please please no one here do that thing where you tag 20 people at the bottom of your post just to get more likes and engagement it's a terrible terrible tactic to do it screams of desperation you'll go on linkedin you, you will see people doing it there so just don't do it uh, only use three relevant hashtags in a post again that is not uh an arbitrary figure that's tried and tested is LinkedIn's own recommendation. We do it in every post we publish for us and our clients. Sometimes we might do four if there's an extra hashtag we want to fit in there, but generally three is the magic number. Use different post types, mix it up. If you've only published text-based posts for the last five posts, make sure you publish a post with an image, uh, a photo as your next, as your next post uh, or a video, like take a step outside your comfort zone uh, we've all got smartphones uh, and computers with cameras on them. You don't need any fancy equipment to get started on publishing video content. Just take the plunge. Uh, posts with images on average get two times more engagement than text only. Uh, please remember to reply and engage with comments. I'm not saying you have to uh, take the take the bite if a, someone's trolling you or something like that. Obviously, you can just ignore them. But any good comments that you get on your post which are carrying on the conversation, respond to them actively grow your network. Don't just wait for people to send you a connection request. It's on you to go out there and grow your network actively. Use DMs appropriately. So take the conversation out of the comments and into a DM when the time is right. E.g., if you want to set up a call or you're interested in asking them a specific question, which doesn't need to be a public comment visible to the whole world. Um, build rapport. Um, which you can do through just engaging with their content and uh, and being there and like paying attention to what other people are saying. So that's social listening side of things. And please remember to be yourself because uh, everyone else has already taken. Uh, and I think that's it. So um, Kat, over to you to, to ask any questions that we got. And Tim and I will do our best to, um, to answer them. Yeah, there's a few Thanks. in there, which is good. 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. That was really, really useful. So we've got several from Laura and one from Richard. So Laura says, do you see social selling, so the use of LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram, a better investment for a business than a website? Great question. I think uh, I think you need both. Um, but uh, what I would say is this will completely depend on your business type. Um, if you're a product based mm -hmm. business and B2C, then you're probably going to have to have a website that's got, you know, that lists them all. And it's probably a, a Shopify type website. Mm -hmm. If you're a service based business like us, it will all come down to how you do win your work normally um and what and how you might want that to change so you might just have a really simple but professional landing page style site that's just a one page website that's got some core information on it and then you do all the rest of your stuff through social selling like brilliant if that works for you great however you might have a really strong seo strategy as part of your business development in which case you're going to need a bigger website with more pages on it and a blog where you're regularly publishing long form relevant content to it because you rely on organic search engine results for us it's absolutely a combination but we we focus more on the social selling side of things than our own website our own website which we're uh tim's under pressure to uh, to update before the christmas holidays is uh is like that for a couple of reasons a because we've been so busy doing doing client work that our own website has taken a bit of a backseat classic case of uh cobbler's children or whatever uh but it's also because we don't need it to be that great because we don't we're not relying on um like seo and organic traffic um it's not it's not part of our uh, business development uh process so we don't need to because we again because we win all our work through linkedin that's great that's great and uh, she has another one is how often should you be posting in linkedin i guess this is particularly when you start off as well is there um a rhythm you need to start building up or just every now and again no there's no there's no rule there's no rhythm uh don't listen to anyone that tells you that there is something specific because they are lying through their teeth and they don't know they don't know the linkedin algorithm or anything only linkedin knows that so just get started and don't put yourself under too much pressure. Um, if publishing one post a week is manageable and comfortable for you, then start there and increase as you go along. Um, I've gone through a bit of a dry patch of publishing on LinkedIn as much as I normally do, simply due to workload and work schedules and being out of the office uh, for client workshops and stuff like that. But I'm normally publishing about three to five times a week. Um, and you'll see that if you visit my profile and go through my my posts and stuff. Um, Tim probably publishes slightly less, but that's because yeah. I do more business development and Tim does more client delivery. But again, we try and we try and publish as much as we can, don't we, Tim? Absolutely. And if you're not posting on LinkedIn, you know you can go on and build engagement and get po profile views by commenting on relevant content, liking relevant content, sharing relevant content, etc. Um, so there are other ways to stay, you know, visible on LinkedIn without actually having to post uh, anything. But of course, it's about building up that confidence to be able to do that. I wasn't particularly big on LinkedIn a couple of years ago, and I've only got just 2000 connections. But I do see some very good engagement with some of the stuff that I've got. You know, Russ has got nearly 9000, nearly 10,000. So, you know, I think sometimes it's always interesting to put those two into different perspectives. You know, Beth, our employees only got less than 400, but she gets good engagement on some of her stuff um, yeah. because it's it's tailored to the specific audience. So, yeah. No, no, that's really great. Just 2000. That's still pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's taken a long time to get to that, though. I must admit, it's taken a long time. Um, OK, so Richard's one is how do you work out what media platform is best for your sector to generate leads apart from just trying out? Um, I'm going to Please. quickly jump in here because I think <laughs> <laughs> Meshwork is going to be a good place to do that. And I think what you guys have been saying beforehand is providing that knowledge and information is just so useful. And we've got a platform where it's just people in that sector. So if you're being loud and you're providing blogs and interesting content on this platform and it's a slow moving one because it's a we've only got one sector we're looking at, people will take notice and hopefully that will lead to 
people getting in contact with you for future jobs but i'll let russ and him <laughs> Yeah, so um, it's a great question by uh, by Richard, and he's kind of answered his own question because actually just trying them out is the best way. Like, I'm a marketer, so I know off the bat more about a lot of social channels than other people will because it's my job. So I'll know what is not going to work for us as a business better than some other people will. They'll just have to do trial and error. Um, I know that I've known that LinkedIn's been the best for like over a decade now. So there's a kind of unfair advantage there, but have we tried being on Facebook? Yes. Is it completely irrelevant to us as a business? Yes. Uh, not only that, we like hate the platform literally in terms of the, the UX design and just the way it works and stuff. But we, we, we've tried Facebook and we, we listened to the data that it was telling us in terms of engagement we got and leads generated and we completely stopped it we've got a company page as avery and brown on facebook but we it's so there's nothing on it it's just set up mm -hmm. because facebook owns instagram and there's a thing there with you have to have a facebook page and stuff but um yeah trial and error uh but why we why we're so big on linkedin and why we love doing our training and getting other people to do it is because we've yet to find a business for whom it's not relevant mm. So that's, that for me is the difference on LinkedIn, like B2C brands, B2B brands, different sectors. Honestly, if you do it right, uh, there are some great people on LinkedIn who have got like a hundred thousand followers who are like uh, stop motion animators using it in a really interesting way. Or I don't know, Tim, like who, I can't think of examples now, but that, there are so many, aren't there? Yeah, but we, we've seen, we've seen small local gardening companies absolutely yep. smash it on LinkedIn because you know majority of people have got a garden or have got some outside space or, or who are interested in growing fruit and vegetables and they give tips you know people on LinkedIn are actually people so there is um you know there's always going to be some sort of content in there um one thing I would say is you know TikTok is um is 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 an incredible platform it's not one that we've explored but there are some big, there are some big brands and big B2B brands that are actually levering, leveraging TikTok very, very well um, by doing some incredible video content, uh, which is just increasing their brand awareness. They know that no one might not necessarily buy from them, but there's always someone who knows someone who needs some sort of service. So the, the platforms, as Russ said, it is about trial and error, but LinkedIn really is a sort of a catch-all, I think. I'll put it in another example as well. Um, a lot of you might have seen comments on some people's posts saying, like, what's this doing on LinkedIn? This isn't Facebook. Right. So generally, like, hopefully no one here has like said that, but generally those people are the people that are stuck a decade ago that think LinkedIn is still what it used to be, like the, the professional recruitment network where you can't possibly share a a personal story or something like they are literally a decade behind linkedin moved on from that ages ago and the people seeing success from linkedin are the people who do publish content that's it's just a social media channel now mm. people are humans people buy from people uh obviously there's some content that i would say is definitely irrelevant for linkedin that but you see it few and far between and you can you can unfollow people and meet people if they start publishing content like that on a regular basis but yeah, all the examples we just gave about how every single post we publish is not sales related. It's just about uh, sustainability, sustainable business, our own take on world events like COP26 or whatever it was. Like nothing about how, oh, we do, we do new websites and branding and this and that. So get in touch with us. You know, that's not what it's about. So, yeah. Right. So we've got a few more. One is from um laura i think you guys have already um covered this but what is the difference between impressions and views um yeah good question uh same thing so an impression the only difference would be if you post a video post and it tell you your views that is telling you how many views your video has got mm -hmm. when you share a post and it tells you your views that is how many views your post has had in the feed it doesn't mean someone's read it that's really important. Yeah. It doesn't mean 11,000 people have read your posts from top to bottom. That mm -hmm. it's literally, it could be a second that they were scrolling in your feed and hovered over it and like that, that, that then counts as a view. It's a general figure. And how can views 
Oh, sorry, Kat, I've read out your next question. How can you <laughs> see followers? Uh, is uh, That's really simple, Laura. That's for what we talked about, because if I've got 10,000 followers, remember that I can get 100,000 views on a post because LinkedIn doesn't just show that post to only my followers. The minute someone from my uh, audience likes it, remember that it then appears in the feed of all of their connections. And that's why you'll see a post in your feed saying, uh, Russ liked this. So if, if we're connected, Laura, it'll say Russ liked this post. And that post will be from someone who's not necessarily one of your connections, but they will be your second degree connection or third degree connection because they're one of mine. And that's how you get that huge organic reach on LinkedIn. It's brilliant. That's how you, that's how you get viral basically but viral is bandied around too much because really viral means like going massive like you know hundred thousand million views on something but you can put it with a take it with a pinch of salt because actually viral means different things to your own network if your if your network is a hundred people big and you get 500 comments and likes on a post you have effectively gone viral relative to the size of your individual network but yeah um cool so we've literally got Two more. So Alex is saying, is it best to post as a company or an or as an individual if you are a small company? Individual, every every single time, all day long. Yeah. yeah. If you're going, if you haven't got much time and you need to think about, uh, you know, how you spend that time best on LinkedIn, publish as yourself, as Alex, not as your company page. Your reach and everything will just be so much bigger. Obviously, the answer, the longer answer is do then try to publish to your company page as well. But to put it in perspective, we publish about two to three times on average as Avery and Brown uh, per week. Whereas obviously between the three of us, we're publishing more like six to ten times a week as mm. individuals. Yeah. Mm. Um, cool. And so the last one is Richard. Is LinkedIn premium good for when you're starting to build your network or only useful when you are? more established with connections and engagement? Oh, great question. I would, uh, having used it myself and paid for it myself, I would just avoid it generally. I think it's a massive, massive ripoff and a bit of a con by LinkedIn actually, because um, they've actually taken away some of, the, um, some of the stats and the extra stuff that you would see from it. So to most people, being able to see the last... 90 people that viewed your profile versus only the last what is it three or something Tim I don't know yeah like is not actually that useful it, it would be useful if you're going to go through those 90 people to like look at who they are to see if they're a potential prospect so that you can then do something for your sales process fair enough I would really question how many people actually do that the other insights you get from paying for premium just are not that worth it in my opinion and the benefit of taking on board the tips and stuff that we've given you are the real results come from publishing great content to LinkedIn, not from having a premium account or anything like that. Yeah. All right. So that was some great responses and that's all our questions. And everyone's just said how useful it is. And thanks to both you and Tim. It's been, yeah, it's been really, it's been really great. I'm going to up my LinkedIn game after this as well. <laughs> Yeah, you've got you've got absolutely no excuse. Now. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm on it. I'm on it. It's scheduled for 2022. <laughs> and um, do you feel free feel free to connect with us? Obviously, um, as part of your new your newfound love for LinkedIn and your connection request, feel free to connect with uh, with Tim and I. Um, just attach a note like we like we recommended, saying that you were on the the training just now, so that we know who you are, and we'll be happy to to accept. And then we can start engaging with your content and be there to support you all. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everyone. And um, we'll see you again for another CPT. Awesome. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Pat.